to you, and there's so much to discuss with you uh, this afternoon. First, uh, cuts to entitlement programs like Social Security have been a major source of disagreement throughout uh, this whole entire debate. You have a plan that would help cut spending, particularly on Social Security, but it preserves the program. How exactly will that work? Basically, it does not increase taxes on anyone. It will not cut core benefits on anyone. It just raises the age gradually, three months a year, starting in 2016 to the age of 69 by 2027, and it will lower the cost of living increase by 1%. So if inflation is 2.5%, it would be a COLA of 1.5%. That's it, and it will fix Social Security for the 75-year gap. I think it is essential that we address entitlements like Social Security if we're going to really make a dent in the deficit. And certainly, Speaker Boehner, we just heard from him and our reporters, uh, our reporters uh, hit from the White House just now that, that Mr. Boehner is, is behind you. Having said that, there are some on the other side, on the Democratic side, that believe that oil and gas companies need to pony up. In particular, they're getting too much in subsidies, too much in tax breaks overall. I know that Texas, your state, uh, is, is crucial when it comes to the industry. Have you had conversations with leaders in your state? I have not, but I know that oil and gas doesn't get any business deductions that every other business doesn't get. Uh, talking about <coughs> subsidies, I mean, it's the general business deductions. I think that we should treat every business the same. And if we take away deductions and we lower the rate, I think that would be a fair trade. It would actually increase revenue, but it would be across the board fair, not singling out one industry that may be doing well now, but uh, so other companies are too, other industries are too. Why would we single out one and treat it differently from everyone else? Now, uh, uh, Senator, it's Bob O'Brien. It subsidies, I think it's disingenuous. Okay. Uh, Senator, sorry to interrupt. It's Bob O'Brien. You know, Wall Street continues to behave as though it's inevitable that an agreement on the debt ceiling will be arrived at by August 2nd. Is Wall Street wrong in being so, so self-assured about this? Well, I think that they are wrong in being self-assured, but they are right that all of us are taking this very seriously. Uh, but we're not going to vote to increase the debt ceiling, and many Republicans have said so, unless there is real reform that will assure that we cut spending enough that we will not ever have to raise the debt ceiling again, and we will start bringing that debt down to a reasonable level. So uh, I, it is not a done deal. And Wall Street should not count on it, but know that we don't want to have this uh, happen. We don't want to default. We don't want to have any kind of crisis, but we believe it would be a crisis to raise the debt ceiling and act like it's business as usual in Washington. Senator, this is Sandra Smith. Just broadly speaking, where are we right now on this? Obviously, this meeting is continuing on Capitol Hill as we speak. Are we coming together on this? Are we making progress? Do you truly believe? I think there is now a little bit of progress being made. For the first time, I have felt that way this week because uh, before that, we were just seeing the president talk on TV and say we have to raise taxes on corporate jets, and then we would have our side saying, no, we're not going to raise taxes in this kind of economy. Now we're talking about revenue raising that would be something that would be tax reform, where you might get more revenue because you build the economy, that people would be higher, that there would be more revenue coming in because our economy is booming. That's the kind of revenue increase we'd like to see. Well, Senator, another thing that you've been very vocal about in your years uh, in the state of Texas in particular has been small businesses and the effect of any type of tax break yes. on the small businesses, those that file as LLCs, S1 corporations. There is still, it seems, uh, this sticking point. I know that you're saying that there's progress, but still a sticking point when it comes to raising taxes on the millionaires and up. The president has mentioned it. Uh, Nancy Pelosi has mentioned it. Where do you think this is going to end up for small business across the country? Well, of course, as you said, so many businesses are either single proprietorships or they are subchapter S corporations. And, uh, of course, they are taxed at individual rates. So when you talk about uh, taxing a gross revenue, uh, that's going to do more to put a damper on employment. We have 9% unemployment in this country. 
people, the small businesses I talk to are most afraid of this health care plan and the cost increases that that is going to uh, provide for them. And to have tax increases on top of the health care needs is going to to really make small business just um, not only not higher, but go into a real extremist mm -hmm. position. So uh, I think yeah. that we've got to really think about health care looming out there as well as tax increases in this kind of environment. Uh, it just doesn't make sense. And, and, and jobs, as you mentioned, Senator, always a pleasure to talk to you. Senator Kay Bailey Hutchinson, Republican from Texas. Senator, thank you uh, very thank much. You. Folks, to all of you at home, we want to hear from you. Is it more important to get a deficit deal done by August 7th?